Hey, what's going on guys, Vaughn Mentality here. Today, man, I just wanna talk a little bit about just risk management, risk control, and uh, just going off your gut, you know? You've, you, if you just sit here and watch charts over time, over you know thousands and thousands of hours, you'll start to notice when technicals aren't lining up, when market sentiment isn't lining up with what you're seeing on the charts, when you're seeing you know the VIX act in you know strange ways, you're seeing certain sectors like beta or tech, you know not participating. When you start seeing things like that and you're feeling a little uneasy, uh, it's it's okay and it can be smart to take some risk off the table and wait for the easier opportunities because. Man, did we see a just two you know sides of a of a totally different coin today, guys? Like, geez. Um, and yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about risk control. So, big picture, right? If if the coronavirus uh, you know dump last year didn't teach you anything about risk control, now's a great time to go ahead and start talking about it since we're already recovered the entire move and we're up from that point nearly as much as we sold off. Um, just pretty much straight up on the weekly time frame, right? You look at the past 20 days, we finally saw a bearish turnaround over the past couple days here, right? We got we flushed down and broke this 3900, then we held it, we got back above it, failed it again, flushed 3900, dropped into the 3800s here, held for a second, thrust a 3880 support, and we you know came down to the 3840. You got people's you know zooming out, a ton of spy bear flow zooming out, like okay, we come down to 3740, we might even come down to 3660. You know, it wouldn't be. Uh, unprecedented you know if we came back to you know 3400 on the ES this is so overextended and as soon as we're seeing that sentiment start to shift bang we rip right back up to you know almost new all-time highs in a day off of who knows what news I mean we're just kind of speculating about it in, in the chat room at this point but it, when you trade the stock market, there's a lot of unpredictability, and it's your job to look for clues in order to help shape your bias, and that way you can interpret the technicals correctly and make profitable trades. And when markets are trending, that's easy to do. You know, you're know, you looking at volume, you're looking at breaking of upside uh, channels, you're looking at holds of support, right? You're looking at getting long on the strongest, you know, strong uh, bullishly diverging names. And you're looking to take profits higher, right? Before supply. In a bearish market, you're seeing that pullback. You're doing the exact opposite, right? But in markets where it's just chopping, you know, down here, it looks like we're about to break right back up, back down, right back up, you know, back down, right back up. When you're seeing that sort of choppiness, the risk reward is, is skewed. Um, unless you're sitting here watching the charts every second, and even if you are, depending on your strategy, your edge may just fade away, right? The probabilities of success decrease when you don't have the correct bias or the correct reading on the market in order to make those trades that line up with your strategy, right? So for me, uh, I, I spoke about this last video discuss, talking about on the SPY. Things just were being were really weird. We were seeing overall weakness on the market, even on days uh, last week, the past really two weeks. Let me go back. We saw the huge flush out on the ES back here, right? Back in early March, and then nothing but straight up. But then you pull up names like Tesla, right? And we've been selling off this whole time period. Like we haven't been able to hold. And so it, <coughs> excuse me, it's been really strange. Um, it's been really strange. And Beta was just super weak. You'd think Apple would be, you know, if the spy goes and takes out a new all-time high, you'd think Apple would do the same thing. No, Apple's been weak too. You jump over to Amazon, Amazon's been weak too. So we were seeing this kind of, you know, decoupling and correlations from the ES and, and beta stocks, right? The main beta names. While we're seeing the market rip and then the market starts pulling back and the names continue to be weak and things were just looking strange. Uh, go back to my earlier videos and you'll see I talked a little bit about that. As soon as I noticed that can carrying on into this week, I went ahead and let everybody know. I said, hey guys, you know, I'm gonna be sitting on my hands for most of this time this week. I don't know where we're trending, what's going on. We're up and then we're down and the VIX is up and then it's down. I just don't know. So I'm gonna sit on my hands and remain patient and I'm only gonna take a trade if it's an extreme setup. You know, as far as like a washout long into that support or if we saw, you know, some crazy outsized upside move on the VIX, I was looking to get short on that, which I talked about in, in the prior videos. And I said that, you know, Monday, right? And sure enough, as soon as we made that bullish move to the upside, everyone thought, we're because it's getting long, we're thinking we're going higher. We gave it right back up. Went back right back up into that previous channel, gave it up again. So this whole time, I'm not taking many positions. I'm just kind of sitting on my hands, remaining patient. I'm definitely not you know, using size. And I didn't get caught up in all this chop. 
right? And it was a very stress-free week for me. And it put me in a position where I can sit and wait versus having a bunch of positions on and constantly getting gapped on, gapped up, gapped down, etc. right? So because I noticed those that you know the strange downtrending of the VIX coupled with the strength of the ES, uh, the bearish divergence from beta names, all those factors you know moving into this week made me want to go ahead and take a handoff, right? And I was telling everybody earlier this week that I'm, it's very possible we get a leg down. And on that leg, I was looking for the VIX to see a significant you know price move, right? At least to get over 25, at least over 25, right? Um, and guess what happened? We couldn't even do it. We popped to the 23 on this pullback and then died immediately, right? When we sold off down here to the 3850s and I saw that the VIX wasn't anywhere near it was supposed to be, that's when the sentiment shifted again. It's like, okay, well, when we should be most bearish, we weren't. And so that was another yellow flag. And then guess what happens? We soak the whole breakdown, all that spy bearish flow we've been talking about in chat for the past two days in a row got killed yesterday, okay? Then into today, a lot of people were thinking, okay, we're just gonna sell it off during after hours like we've been doing, you know? Nope, we ripped up to the upside. And here in the close, we had a surprise 40 point move and we're not even sure why in chat, right? Like we're looking for headlines, nothing. You can just see it here, pretty much just straight up. We tried to break down, get to go roll red and just buying all the way into the close. Some, looks like some shorts might've been squeezed out here when you look at that volume. But unpredictability. So as soon as you think that we're bearish and we break down this 3,900, we turn right back around and we see those yellow flags on the VIX and we're right back up. And if you jump back over to beta names, all the bears into the close today got killed on all of them. Look into the close on Apple. Look into the close on Tesla. Look into the close on, well, if they shorted, if they got in here, they're good. But if they got into the, towards the close looking for the gap down, you know, they got trapped. Look at Amazon. Look at Microsoft. Okay, all these beta names trapped into the close. As soon as you would think they'd be most weak, they weren't. And then we get this surprise ES move. So the whole point of this video, guys, is if you have a strategy and you're making consistent profits in the market and weird things are happening, you're seeing yellow flags go off, maybe the stock you're following isn't trading how it normally does, uh, you're getting chopped up a lot. As soon as you're long, you get stopped out, you go short, you get stopped out, and you're not seeing day-to-day -day consistency in the markets it's okay to take some time off. Take a step back, take that risk off the table, and evaluate the picture from the outside and wait for things to start moving back in a direction that you feel comfortable with getting involved in. Because I took off pretty much this whole week, I avoided all this chop, guys. And now that we got this confirmation over 3,900, now I can say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look bullish. I'm gonna look for bullish divergence and maybe travel names or maybe uh, tech. If we get a pullback towards you know, VWAP 3920s or 3,900, I'm gonna look to start scaling long on those 4,000s, right? The 4,000 call options. Because I'm thinking now that we had this huge upside confirm, I can get long and we cleared all this supply. So that's just, a, I just wanna talk a little bit about how I, often do that in chat. Um, you'll see if, if things start getting weird, I'll say, hey guys, I'm taking a step back and I'm relaxing because it's okay to not know what's going on. What's not okay is to force trades and lose money when you don't have to, right? So that's all guys. I just wanna talk a little bit about that. Um, didn't have any notes or anything for this video. Just pretty much just expressing some of the things we've been talking about in chat. And I just wanted to get that out for you. So I hope it helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you're interested in joining my chat room, there's information for that on my Patreon in the description box. And remember guys, to stay focused, to develop that bot mentality, which is a trading mentality where you learn to eliminate your emotions so you can trade like a machine, guys. I'm out of here. Deuces.